The medium sized vans are the vans that you see getting stuff done all over the world every day of the year. The taller, higher, big vans tend to be a bit more specialized. The smaller vans, the city vans, tend to be much more niche market. But these are the do it all guys of the commercial vehicle world. Last year, the Ford Transit Custom won not only this category, but also our overall Commercial Vehicle of the Year award. But this year, there's a couple of new Europeans and a South Korean that want to take on the Ford at its own game. If you wander into a Ford dealership right now to buy a Transit Custom 340, you'll get the bigger 125 kilowatt engine, which was a running change to this model. But even with the 96 kilowatt unit fitted to our test vehicle, the six-speed conventional automatic has enough brain power to make it work and paper over any holes in the engine's power delivery. What's most impressive about the Transit in this market segment is the safety, both active and passive, thanks to six airbags and autonomous braking. Actually, the autonomous braking is part of a tech pack that, when we tested the vehicle, added $1,600 to the purchase price, but from about now, will come standard on this model. Even at $1,600, it was a bargain and also includes blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, a tire pressure monitoring system and active cruise control. The Transit's cabin is very clever with all sorts of sockets and storage zones and it's a fairly natural steering vehicle at freeway speeds. Our biggest complaint would be the ride quality which can feel a bit brittle. But with a load on board, the Transit was brilliant thanks largely to well chosen damper rates. It's obvious from the start that the Renault traffic is built down to a price, but what a price. It comfortably undercuts everything else here by a minimum of about $9,000. So you can forgive its smaller 1.6 litre engine and its reduced highway performance, although its six speed manual, the only manual here, allows you to extract everything the little engine has to offer. Although billed as a three seater, the Renault is a bit compromised cabin wise. There's nowhere for the driver to put their clutch foot, and the centre passenger has to sit side saddle thanks to the placement of the gear change and the park brake. Safety wise, the bigger mission is a reversing camera, which all the others have, and the van's aerodynamics mean that it feels a crosswind more than the rest. In fact, the suspension allows for a little roll steer at speed and the whole show can feel a bit darty when you're on the move, particularly with a load on board. That's when the suspension feels the crudest and the engine can be felt struggling at times. But for the operator on a tight budget, the traffic should be on their shortlist. A new nose and front bumper can't hide the fact that the Hyundai iLoad is an older vehicle than its peers here. The cabin is less accommodating and has fewer storage cubbies and power sockets. The 5-speed automatic gearbox looks, on paper, to be a limiting factor, but it's actually very good with ratios that match the engine well. Which is easier than it might have been thanks to the vast torque produced by the relatively large Hyundai turbo diesel. There's some roll steer that creeps into the iLoad's handling, but in the real world, that's only really noticeable when driven back to back with these newer designs. The Hyundai's real problem lies in its safety package, or rather lack of it. As well as being a pair of airbags behind the Transit, the Hyundai gets only a lap belt for the center passenger. And that's an instant fail for fleet customers with an eye on OH&S. The cargo situation isn't great either, and although the iLoad has a pair of side doors, they don't open wide enough for easy forklift loading. Meantime, the sloping roof line reduces load space towards the rear of the cargo bay. But the one vehicle that rolled all the attributes into one in 2019, and it was a very close run thing, was this vehicle, the Peugeot Expert. The interior of the Peugeot Expert is a fresh new design. It looks quite clean and it, it's probably just that little bit classier than the other vehicles in this category. Uh, it's also got lots of clever storage spaces and power sockets and USB jacks. So it will work for the person that's on the road all day. And you do get paddle shifters, which is a bit of a, a, a strange one in a car like this for my money, but they've decided to include them anyway. On the downside, now that the gear selector is just this rotary dial, I don't know why it had to be put there. Why couldn't it have been put up here somewhere out of the road so that this space is freed up for the middle passenger's legs and knees? I really like that you can see where Peugeot's put some thought into the design of this vehicle. Twin windscreen wipers at the rear and barn doors that open out right out to 90 degrees for great access for forklift loading and a sliding door on each side. The access in this vehicle is brilliant. Designing a medium-sized van cannot be easy. There are a lot of moving targets. Performance and dynamics have to be right. Safety is now a given. Reliability and serviceability are important to a fleet manager in a commercial world. 
And you've also got to get the thing into a showroom at a price that doesn't make that same fleet manager go into choking spasms. And then it's got to operate regardless of whether it's got a box of feathers in the back or a pallet of lead ingots. So inevitably there will be compromises and we've seen that with some of the vehicles here. Some of them are really good at one end of the payload spectrum and kind of lose the plot at the other end. And some of them have missed the boat on some of the fundamentals. And that leaves this vehicle, the Peugeot Expert, which for our money is the vehicle that nails that moving target the best and does so over a wide range of payload possibilities. And in a truck like this, that's where the real magic happens. One of the things about the Peugeot is that it is actually really nice to drive. The Europeans have been making small capacity diesel engines for a long time and it shows in this vehicle. It's really smooth, but it's got a lot of poke when you need it and the grunt is all in the right place. So when you get on it, it gets up and goes. It's got very tall gearing though, which I think is probably a little too tall for Australia. It doesn't really want to use sixth gear all that much. And when it does drop into sixth, you get a little harmonic resonance through the vehicle. At 130, 140 kilometers an hour on a French auto route, not such a problem. But here in Speed Camera Australia, you'll find you're not in sixth gear all that much. The ride quality is actually really good in this too. Uh, you sit back from the front axle a fair way without compromising load space too much, but the steering is very faithful and the whole thing has a fluid feel. It feels like it was designed by one person and that one person was actually pretty good behind the wheel because it is, of all these vans, the driver's choice. The 2019 Drive Commercial Car of the Year Awards are proudly presented by BP+. With over 1,400 sites across Australia, BP provides a premium fuel network to keep your business moving. With BP+, vehicle operators and business owners have a fuss-free solution to conveniently manage their fuel costs, whether it's a single vehicle or a nationwide fleet. With quick and easy ways to pay for fuel, simple to use online tools and comprehensive reports. BP Plus card members can also choose to pay using the BP Me phone app, which allows users to pay at the pump and simply drive away. It also means you don't need to remember your odometer number. Simply input it into the app. It's quick and simple and keeps your business on the road rather than standing in line. With a host of convenient online services and customizable reports, BP Plus also saves time back in the office too. For more information, visit bpplus.com.au and apply for your own BP Plus card today.